Welcome. This is the third video in the mini series on merchandise distribution NS4 HANA Retail for Merchandise Management. In this video, we will explain product driven or push based flow through. Let us look at some of the benefits of push based or product slash article driven flow through. The process enables you to centrally distribute products to multiple stores, for instance, during product introduction. It reduces material handling efforts and the time needed for goods passing through the DC. You can provide repacking and value add-ons before delivery to stores or customers. Let us look at the basics of push-based flow-through. If you have not already done so, we recommend you to view episode 1 in this mini-series. It provides an overview of the four main merchandise distribution methods in S4 HANA Retail for Merchandise Management. For push or product-driven, distribution is planned using an allocation table. Procurement documents, vendor orders, and issued documents, warehouse orders or deliveries, are then created as follow-on documents. An allocation table is a tool typically used by the head office to plan, monitor and control the distribution of stocks of merchandise among different stores. It represents a product or push-driven distribution methodology. In flow-through cross-docking, large logistic units are received. If a recipient receives a smaller quantity of goods than is contained in one logistic unit, the large unit is split into smaller ones, sometimes even with additional services added to the product, such as a flat to hanging process for textiles. It's time to prepare for a demo. In our demo, we run a small retail chain. Our distribution center, R101, is located in Frankfurt. We have two stores, R112, located in Saarbrücken, and R113, located in Mainz. For simplicity, we will use one product only, MRMDFT1 ART1. Push based flow through consists of both a planning phase and an execution phase each with several process steps. We will take you through both phases, step by step, utilizing several different Fury apps. Let us get going. We will kick off by creating the push, or in other words, the product-driven demand. We will create an allocation table. We will define the requested delivery dates for stores, as well as for our DC, two days earlier. The table will be for one product only, the MRM DFT1 ART1. 50 units in total. We will push or split the total quantity between the two stores, our 112 and our 113, 25 units each. It will be supplied through our DC, ER101. Before saving the table, we also define a deadline for store confirmations. Before saving, we check the incompleteness log to be on the safe side. Since stores need to be notified about their assigned allocations, we use the bundle allocation message app to make them aware. Stores have a deadline to meet regarding their allocations and can utilize some functionalities in S4 HANA to do so. At some point, we will use the allocation table processing, plant reply app to review, adjust and confirm the allocation table. When the allocation table is confirmed, we are ready to create the subsequent follow-on documents. We need to raise a purchase order to the supplier and create the necessary warehouse orders and stock transport orders to facilitate goods movement to the stores. We need to make a note of the PO number. We can soon see that only one STO will be created. With all three alternatives, only one single stock transfer order is generated for all the stores for each vendor in an allocation table generation process. This is controlled in customizing by the item categories of the allocation table. We complete the last step in the planning phase by performing a goods receipt for our newly created purchase order. It was, to our surprise, not delivered in full. Instead of the ordered 50, we received only 40 units. We are now entering the execution phase. After goods receipt, the distribution is adjusted according to the goods receipt document. Since it was not delivered in full, quantity adjustments are needed. We do a simple fair share, providing 20 units instead of 25 to each store. As an optional step, we can have a look at the merchandise distribution monitor. As in the previous step, we can see that none of the stores will receive their full delivery. Only 20 of the initially allocated 25 units will be provided. 
it's time to create the distribution orders. Distribution orders are transfer orders that do not reference a system document and are used as distribution lists. They are only used for flow through. The outbound deliveries are generated later when the picking process has been confirmed. Since outbound deliveries will be created first when the warehouse picking process has been completed, we use the Display Transfer Order app to confirm the completion of warehouse operations. We do it, in the background, one line at a time. Although not shown in full here, as warehouse operations have been completed, we are ready to create the outbound deliveries. We do so through the Create Outbound Delivery for Merchandise Distribution app. We do it, store by store, and check the delivery log to note the delivery number. For our demo, we will need that later. As quickly as we can, we repeat this process step for our store in Mainz, our 113. Although warehouse operations have been completed, we use the Pick Outbound Delivery app to perform the goods issue. We perform the goods issue from our flow through storage location. Since delivery documents have been adjusted to reflect the new quantities, we confirm quantity in full before performing the actual goods issue. Please bear in mind that most of these process steps will be automated and run in the background in real life. For demo purposes, we do it here in a stepwise approach. Like now, when we also perform goods issue manually for the second outbound delivery. As an additional optional step, we will do a quick check of the store's current stock level. We do this just before we perform the final step, the receipt of the goods in stores. We use the stock, multiple materials app and see that both stores currently have 30 units of MRMD FT1 ART1 in stock. We will finalize the process by performing goods receipt in the stores. We use the receive goods app. Since we will be performing the goods receipt for both stores, we will need to select store R112 before we use the outbound delivery number noted earlier. We receive 20 units. We change to our second store, our 113. We use the other delivery number and receive the goods also here. 20 units. With this, we have completed our push-based flow-through process. Before we end the demo, we will confirm that everything is as expected by revisiting the stock, multiple materials app. As foreseen, the stock levels have increased from 30 to 50. Mission accomplished. The functionality shown in this video is available in S4 HANA Retail for Merchandise Management, on-premise in the cloud. It is also available in SAP ECC Retail with a different user experience. This video is part of a mini-series of five episodes covering the main variants of merchandise distribution and S4 HANA Retail for Merchandise Management. Let us recap some of the benefits of push-based or product-slash-article-driven flow-through. The process enables you to centrally distribute products to multiple stores, for instance, during product introduction. It reduces material handling efforts and the time needed for goods passing through the DC. You can provide repacking and value add-ons before delivery to stores or customers. The views, information or opinions expressed are solely those of the individuals involved and not those of the individual's employer or any other group or individual. Thanks a lot for watching. Please comment, like and subscribe. More videos like this coming shortly. See you then.